Gentlemen, hello and welcome back again to the International 2017 Group Stages, your final match of the night. It's getting late here in Seattle, but there's more Dota to be played. Fnatic versus IGV. And, you know, this one, it's really coming down to the wire. I'm Lyrical, joined as well by Ben Merlini. Woo! Ben, both of these teams, uh, not necessarily in the same place, but on the verge of tiebreakers. Fnatic, they can win this, tie out X creation, and then potentially not get knocked out in the groups. And IGV, if they have any hope of making the upper bracket, they need to win this game here. Fnatic uh, need, what, at least three wins, I think. Yeah. And they're playing EG tomorrow. This win w would potentially force tiebreakers tomorrow. Super important for them. Or else they could go out without even at a chance a tiebreaker. So AA has gone to the phase of first phase. I actually think AA was a big part to why the Doom didn't work out so well. We've seen Lich Doom a numerous amount of times, and it worked out very well in the lane phase, but fell off towards the end just because of the Ancient Apparition ult owning them. So I think Fnatic need to address whether or not they want the Doom themselves. Unlikely, just because it doesn't really didn't really work out too well for them, as opposed to someone like the Faces Void, who Ohio played extremely well despite getting rooted and Doom fight. But I would be very surprised if IG Vitality just didn't immediately respond with the two now that AA is out of the pool. Wow, and Oracle taken as well with this. Yeah, so the Oracle is. It's maybe to protect the void. I'm wondering if they're trying to set up for like some type of cheese, like a Huskar maybe. There's also a possibility of taking a DP. Tends to be paired really well together with Void. But I don't Doom, know, I feel dude. Like <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doom ruins Huskar. Like you can't. Yeah, you can maybe stay alive through Oracle, but you can't do any damage. Like, you you don't have any burning spears, so no one actually cares. They, they'll just ignore you. I I have actually seen Doom used like that a few times, most notably against Bristleback. You Doom a hero that does a lot of damage and is super tanky, and you actually just ignore him because you can't get Warpath stacks, you can't stack up cool sprays, you can't slow anyone with... And you're actually just useless there. So don't always think of Doom as like, oh my god, you just Doom kill this guy. You can actually just to ignore him to kill the entire team. So the Death Prophet that you mentioned has been banned out. Good pairing with Oracle. Well, and they've also taken out those other heroes that have proven to be quite good for IGV. Uh, Paparazzi's been playing some great Sven. Uh, we've seen Puck, Puck just run wild in these qualifiers, or rather the group stages as well. Sven's a weird band, though. Sven's typically not picked versus Faceless Void, because you have like these slow melee BKB wielding heroes don't do well. Like, uh, for example, Life Stealer, you'll almost never see that pick when faces the poison in the game because you just, you just waste your rage, you waste your uptime, and you can't actually right click fights. So that that makes it a little bit weird. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe they have a Meepo player, maybe they're going to do some Lycan. I think, I'm trying to think of other heroes that spends pretty. But both of those would be weird with the face. Of... I don't know. Just seems weird. They already had the armor from the Frost armor, so they don't actually need more. And oh, oh, it was because of the DP. Oh, okay. The deep, the Sven's really good for them. Well, and then they end up also banning out the Huskar. I, I agree with you completely. It probably wouldn't have mattered, but it feels to me like IGV, they are saying with these bands, we think we can play stronger than you, and we're just going to play try and play against you in a straight-up game. Terribly taken again from Fnatic, so... Have they found the recipe for success? The nice part about this, too, is in last game, Ajent went crazy, and that was even without a defensive support. Now that they got it, might be able to be even better. They also had really bad anti terrorblade Weaver, yuck. Ember, who went Lincolns before Maelstrom, also yuck. And no armor talent, triple yuck. Yuck, 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 yuck. It's like laughing. They need Le Lena and... Tinker are the two, I think, best mids versus them. Well, this is what he was originally known for, dogfights. Last time played the Rubik and went ham. He's going to be playing the Earth Spirit this time around. A little bit harder to snipe couriers, but still can make a lot happen. <laughs> yeah, as if it's... <laughs> snipe couriers. <laughs> it just boggled my mind last game how he got it when... They didn't even send it down mid. I don't even think he put in reserve ward mid, too. He's like, they're probably waiting for me. I'm actually just going to chill over here. And go for it. <laughs> Did have the Rubik open, but they didn't want to end up going for it again. So, Nyx, that deals with a lot of the terribly counter. 
It deals with Ember, which they presumed probably was going to be do pretty well versus their line of Wop deals with Inker, deals with Boker. So now, what do you actually put mid? You don't want to really want to right clicker because Terrible has a lot of armor, but you do want some spellcaster AOE because generally that's what's good versus Terrible. And I'm assuming that Febby is probably just gonna like sit mid there and throw out some mana burns on whoever it is that is gonna be played mid. That's more often than not been the way that we've seen Nyx Assassin run in this tournament. I guess it could be uh, in another role more sort of trying to stack and get his levels up early, but whatever it ends up being, not only dealing with the Terrible counters, but they could OD actually. OD's not bad. I like OD versus the Void. We've seen that sometimes. So you have that save, and then you have the pure damage versus the Terror Blade, and you can kill his illusions very Mana burn, though. Yeah. Spike by, by BKB. Okay. Well, Carapaz is actually not that big a deal. You can, like, it's it's so so. You can, like, Astral him during the Carapaz, but on the flip side, he can also Carapaz out of the ad. But, I mean, there's not that many other better options. What other yeah. ones would you prefer as a mid hero? TA. Yuck. SF. Maybe have like a, a DK or a Razor or something? Uh, but then again, also, like, yeah, DK, about... might, DK might not be that. Okay. But, yeah. DK would be pretty good. I'd prefer that over most of the end here. Also, I'll have to see if IGV like it. Still waiting for both the mid and the carry roll. And they will not have last pick, so gonna have to throw that back to Fnatic chance at a counter as well. Might be worth it just to take the mid right now then since you're already going to be countered. You don't know them. Yeah, maybe you can get a little bit of a glimpse into their mid matchup by what Fnatic might might be worth saving it for. Alright, well, 15 seconds left. IGV looking for a berth into the upper bracket. They would have to win out and get a little bit of help couple other people, but they're gonna go back for the morph lane. Ooh, I do like the morphing a lot. The traditional safe laners that are good versus Nyx are bad versus the Void. Like Slark, not terribly great versus the Void. Uh, Juggernaut, Life Stealer, they're all terrible versus the face because I don't. They have the magic immunity to deal with the Carapace, but then they don't have the they don't have anything with Chronosphere. Morphling doesn't really care too much about a Nyx assassin. You can just like shotgun while you're in waveform and. You care about the care at all and also you can morph inside faces void ulti which is great there's no silence right now from fanatic so just presses d button turn big red have you heard about the glowing green strat that's right <laughs> oh, yeah, man. what's that you just permanently press e and you're always glowing green your lowest agility possible and just to flaunt to your opponents Got that it. your lowest of agility possible you're still morphing even though you can't morph anymore that's pretty great i like that some nice bm it's like the smashing r button when you're an invoker same type of thing. Yeah. Head. Similar. Or the other one is the uh, Chaos Knight uh, Reality Re yeah. of Spam. Oh, God. I like this one because it's passive BM. <laughs> like, you don't actually have, You just press one button and then you BM for it. Well, you also have 300 HP, but... Yeah, maybe with the Nyx Assassin in the game, that might not be the best idea. Brewmaster. Oh, okay. Fanatic. So they think they're going to do, like, a sp Space Creator mid that doesn't scale particularly well. And Brew's not bad versus Terrible. He actually, I think, has a lot of survivability versus the Faceless Void and the TP with the Natural Evasion. Definitely feels like it's a good pick to ban out there. It does seem like it would be a little bit weird for Sakata to play. Doesn't fit, seem like his type of hero, but maybe they know something in Strims or something that we don't. Not a whole heck of a lot of time. They're going to ban out the Lina. Mid then. I mean, you have seen occasionally more flames run, but that doesn't seem entirely likely. It definitely seems like the paparazzi hero. <laughs> yeah. It has a hero that's also been gone out of the meta for a little while. We've seen a couple games with Rezo taking it, but you can sometimes be vulnerable to just early pushes. And Legion Commander, Ooh. last pick. I forgot about Legion. Maybe he plays it, but he is pretty much the only one that plays it mid. Very good versus Terrible. Yep, you have a great time versus the Illusions. And you can also prevent someone from getting stun locked from the Huge benefit as well. It has a few armor issues, I would say. Even if you get Blade Mail, it's not ideal. Because I 
really mana versus Terror Blade, but maybe with like a uh, Halberd and quite well. But it's also a long duration to save versus Terror Blade. The only problem is you're probably not going to win a duel because Orc will save people. I guess also you can get counterpicked pretty hard. Like Razor, there's uh, Timber Saw we talked about it the other day. How it's... I, I think LC does very well. But... Okay. Uh, Quop, you just press the attack off. Some Quops don't even skill it. Timber, I think, is like okay, but they still don't have any silence to deal with the Warp. So, will be a Tinker on their end. QO definitely an accomplished Tinker player. They don't have good catch for the Tinker at all. Like, no real great ways to scout in the tree. I think that's the number one thing that you want. Like, Spirit Breaker, Storm Spirit, Clockwork, Nyx Assassin. Like, the heroes are all great. Spectre. At killing a tinker, but they have none of those. And I guess uh, Sakata can like press the attack off the sir, but it's not gonna be. Well, here we go, all down to this final game of the day, and about as close as a must win as it gets for both of these two teams on day three of the groups of TI7. IGV versus Fnatic. Do you have a draft that you favor over the other? Do you think that the Tinker is given enough of an answer for Ajit to be enabled with it? I think he's just going to get run up by the... And I have faith in Paparazzi more. I think uh, he... In the previous games, they picked heroes that he's really good with. Uh, like the Invoker and the uh, Weaver. But I think in this game, it's a good hero-player combination and it's also very good versus the lineup. Zero silences versus Morph. The way you want to play it, if you can at all. Paparazzi. Going to see if he can carry his team to greatness. Play with the least deaths. It's got to be the Morph lane. Last player to be killed. Let's say DJ. I'm putting Morph lane. Last player to be killed. You think he's going to die at the end? <laughs> what, what happens if no one dies? If he doesn't die any? I, well, no, it's like the, the player that dies last. Oh, I think it's the, of the 10 players, the person who hits one death. I, it's, it's worded very poorly. I, I would agree with that. I'm definitely down with agreeing with that. But I'm pretty sure that's what, how the thing is supposed <laughs> to be interpreted. It's, I guess, how would you s s say it? Last player to have non-zero deaths, I suppose. But that I, sounds... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that that's the only other way to really put it. It's clear. Yeah, that's true. Well, Sakata is actually up here on the top lane. So are they sticking Morphling mid? Paparazzi has a mid build. He's going mid with it. That's cool. All right. He does it on Invoker. He does it on Morphling. We'll see if they can actually still get Ohio this rune if IGV uh, not going to be quick enough on the fingers. Paparazzi versus Tinker. That's tough. If you're Morphling, you can't actually morph down that low because then the laser is going to take off like a quarter of your HP at level 1. Head off across to their respective destinations. Trade out the bounty runes one apiece. I guess the nice part about this is they've got super able to take away that range creep and uh, that lack of levels might do something a little bit bad for the Tinker later. Oh, this is a super old school Lich Morph mid lane. Triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Kyo is not happy about that. And Febby will be there to try and go. He actually ended up taking the Impale first. I've seen a couple of them that try and harass mid, take the mana burn early, but it should be fine as well. In the meantime, in July, found a dire wolf. And an alpha for the Oh, God. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. He needs to be really careful. Uh, six seconds before the next one's up. QO in the area. I mean, he can just go for it if he wants. Yeah, he's way too much. Okay. He just is. He can't really take creeps, though. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at Paparazzi. Yeah, he needs a self. Chicken's nowhere close. Well, in the meantime, bottom lane in July, able to just man up against Ajit, and even though he's metamorphosed, uh, in July was trading hits a little bit there, and mid lane, super in some trouble. QO is there, has the laser brought down, drawing first blood. QO doing his thing. Uh-oh. 
Uh-oh. Morphling's also going to be pressured to tower really hard. They have a laser here, too, so I don't even think last hit here. Maybe if he if Super Freak can sell, but he's not rich enough. Just going to try and deny whatever creeps they're capable of doing, and Hale, they thought about going for it. A little bit of strength over. He wants to oh, is it maybe like save for level 3. He already used a lot of mana early. Uh, well, I guess he has a lot of mana. The plus side of in July, uh, the plus side is that in July has been able to really bully this bottom lane and pushing the Terra Blade under tower. Uh, Ajit's not had the greatest time, but he's still maintaining high CS. And how's old Ohio doing? Four versus seven. Both offlaners fearing, fearing similarly. Kyo gets a bottle refill and an Invisrin. Okay, so now he's at full mana. Times are tough for Paparazzi. Maybe we'll wait for level three before he goes for the second round of. Magical and pure damage out onto the Morphling as Super is going to show up here. Paparazzi does a decent amount of damage, but yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah, this Nyx actually just ruined their... And if it were just two on one, they'd have a very easy time. But hitting a stun and putting Paparazzi at like 100 HP before anything really happened to them really set them back. Angelai is going to pull the creep wave past and try and soak up some more experience for himself. Yeah, they can't kill him. That's not the best of matchups. Uh, Ajit's actually going to show up, though. They have Metamorphosis in 15 seconds, and in the meantime, Paparazzi takes down Kyo. What? Dogfight came in. Oh, what a guy. All right. Well, that completely changes the dynamic here. Dogfight salvages that early game again. That's what he does. I wonder how he chose Dog. I'm not sure if I want to know. <laughs> Isn't dog fights like what? Don't they call that like when like two planes are fighting in the air too, or something like that? That is, is that, yeah. Is that a dog fight? Maybe he's been really into airplane movies, dude. That's a possibility. Don't make him a villain like Michael Vick. It's not like his name's Michael Vick or something. Yeah, that'd be. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, in July over here with dog fights again, they want to try and see if they can do a little something something. He's level three and has the one 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 build. Is it pretty much just going to be following around this Earth Spirit to various points of the map, and that's where the kills will most likely happen? In opinion? Oh, same thing as last game. You have a Lich sitting static in lane, and then you have an Earth Spirit who's going to run around and try and make things happen in the lanes. So turn around, gain some bottom lane. Ooh. Go around on mid. Yo, it took some damage there, but doesn't oh, no, the Arcane Rune level 2 sacrifice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is he going to get another one off too? 32 second cooldown on it. Dog fights is here again. They place down a ward. DJ walking in. They do spot him now, so they're going to have to back out. So the Nyx Assassin is here. Need to be at least a little bit careful and cognizant that potential for a wrap. Going on Ninja is pretty hard. He has level 2 Scorched Earth. Oh, good play by Dog fights. He kicked away Febby, so he couldn't get in range for the Impale. I don't know if he would have died anyways, but yeah, oh, pretty. And they blew the metamorphs. That. However, this tower is going to... Oh, he didn't actually use Scorcher. I think he maybe pulled the creeps with Scorcher. Wants dog fights in a lot of trouble. Hale, a little bit off the mark. He will make his escape. And in July, pops the Scorcher. Going to pull those creeps back, just like you said. Maybe get a couple of CS while it's happening as well. Why not? And an Infernal Blade to the face. Oh my god, that is that like... Incredibly uh, ridiculous. Yeah, and Ajit, they get the stun on it too. Maybe gonna make this happen. The purge comes out, the damage is there. Looks like Dogfight's gonna have to back out yet again. DJ trying to kill him off. The Purifying Flames almost taking him down low enough, but he's getting the heals. That is still going to be enough with the right clicks. Now in July, wanting to do something, but he's slow, slowed down. It's just not gonna happen. Although Super has shown up as well. Maybe this is enough to finally kill off DJ. They disarm as well. The body blocks come out but it was never going to be enough. A double kill for in July, making it happen. You know something I that I didn't think about, about picking the Oracle early? Maybe they want a pure, uh, fuel portions and the armor off a lot of them. I don't know if that's useful, but there's not that many reliable sources, sources of dispel offensively, and right. Oracle is one of the best ones. That could be a potential source because they did pick a first phase. There's a Lich into... I wonder if this is the answer. I mean, 
I mean, he's getting robbed at me. That's true. <laughs> that is definitely true. He's so fast that you don't really have that much time to channel which is in the litter team. I think it's a cool idea, but if you could purge towers, then yeah, that would be totally be worth it. I like that idea. Do the buff Oracle need? Maybe. I don't know. Oh, uh, Ajit certainly needs something. Although Febby coming in in the clutch is going to save the day. That was very close. And now QO wanting to make it happen. He has a full mana pool as well as three in laser, two in rockets. Ready to punch some people pretty hard. Fireboat in Uber. trouble. He's going to go down. Fnatic find themselves a nice little kill there. Still, in July, Paparazzi, if you get a lot of tower damage, that's totally worth a lich death. These guys are quite big and... I mean, DJ is here, but he, what can he really do against them? He can just keep this pressure on, trading off the aggro, backing out afterwards. And no damage dealt to the tier 1 tower in the mid lane on the alternate side, because Tinker had to head back in there to try and save his Terrorblade. Ooh, Smoke Command for the two line dogfight. Both of them fairly low on HP, but looking for Ajit once again. Doom is up as well. They're going to run into DJ. Unfortunate for IGV. And they are actually just going to back out when they see that. <laughs> and Ajit just goes, continues farming. He doesn't care. They could potentially get a kill on top, especially if Kyo doesn't get a rune. Looks like in July, we'll be able to scout him out. Are they going to roll in? Dogfights is in range of D. Yeah, I mean, he's not careful. He could just end up going down. Okay, Paparazzi got a free tower. That's, that's great. Yeah, just left him alone down there. And now that the Morphling has gotten through that initial awkward phase, it's starting to feel a little bit better for Paparazzi. Still always going to be a problem. And I have seen occasionally Tinkers, instead of going like the more normal builds, pick up like a Dagon and then just blow up a low uh, HP uh, Morphling before he has a chance to strength form. I don't know if that's what the type of build you would go for in this instance. But... Fevy in the meantime will live for the moment, but with the stun, the right clicks, and the DOT in July on a killing spree. Just trying to put their mojo together. <laughs> that is hellish play that just takes away half your HP. Especially if he crits. Alright, Chrono down, Legion going to be punished finally. They find a quick and easy pickoff. He mentioned Doom is here and he hasn't used it. Yeah, just waiting for an opportunity to doom QO. QO might be walking in over there a little. This is pulling crazy. Well, the core is left alone. Paparazzi still quite strong here. He's going for a fighting build too. Tread first. No bots. Oh my god, did you see those <laughs> reflection illusions? Yeah, that really hurt him a lot. Just trying to maintain whatever he can as far as effective HP to stay alive at. But all across the board, IGV, their cores are up on top. July spots out QO. I don't know if he can actually go for the solo, but you can tell he really wants to. And now with Earth Spirit here, they're going to roll in. They find the stun. They find the kick. There is a Doom if they want to use it, but they come out with a false promise. Well, they throw everything at him. That Chain Frost actually did nothing because of the Fates Edict out. And in July is still going to maintain that kill. Super in trouble. In July. Still standing tall in this one, but should be able to walk away, killing off that Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> I love Infernal Blade. That's the you just feel so hopeless versus this. So. Way better than Love of Death. Yeah. I, I wish, like, every time you're like, man, I hope they hit 25. I hope they hit 25. Level of Death. Level question mark Death. Tinker didn't have bots, so that's... Look at the Lich effect on him, though. Usually you'd have bots, I would say, pretty soon, especially getting the first blood, but he has been hurt by all these range creeps getting denied and trading, what was it, Lich's life yet again for another objective slash kill. Super's been throwing his body forward. What unfortunate there. Febby, he ended up picking up the regen. Yeah, Super's just been kind of running around and causing trouble. But now with dog fights together, they don't have Chain Frost for another 27 seconds, but they might still be able to make something happen oh, here. Oh, QO. Is he dead again? Maybe. Oh. 
Frost, catch, stun, it's there. They got the magnetize as well, and QO further delayed. Oh, good Chrono, though. Able to catch on to Earth Spirit. He is going to end up dying. I don't know if they can find any more, though. They have to back out at least for now. And it looks like... Like an end July. <laughs> just walking around with Frost armor and drums, just <laughs> not caring. Everyone just ignores him because they can't really touch him right now. Yeah. The, I really do like the AA that they targeted in the first phase. It allows two of their heroes to really shine. The Morphling and the... I mean, I think Doom's only one of these They have a good counter to like it. Tinker doesn't do very well. Doom just by play mail run after Tinker. And Scorchers is very good at disabling. I mean, all of these heroes are pretty good blade mail carriers. You got Sakata as well. You can definitely pick it up later on. And yeah. I don't know if you even want to go axe this game on Tinker. It seems scary. I mean, you're not going to die to the blade mail. And it's very bad for Terrible. Terrible has a ton of armor and you'll reflect damage back to the loot. Okay. So it's. I, I don't think you'd really mind too much thinking about So you can also get, like, the. I watched um, OP play a lot of Tinker, and he goes for the defensive skills a lot. The 6 armor, the 225 health. Uh, I'm not sure about the magic versus J, but they still might end up losing him here. The dog fights. Oh my god, that stun. He always hits him. Ohio does still have Chronosphere, but it'd be a fool's errand trying to run in and fight all of these tanky, strong heroes in IGB. I heard that they call Doom dad in Chinese. He's always like <laughs> beating your ass. <laughs> and it, it's very relevant this game to the way Angel is playing. He's 5 0 4 and just laying the smack down on everyone. That is amazing. Oh, God. Well, uh, that's certainly the case here. 80 bonus Devour Gold. He even went in and took the large creep from Ajit. That, the, the uh, Alpha Wolf creep is very useful here because more play, you usually have like 200 base damage. That means you yeah. can get smacked down by Angela. Yeah. Oh, wait. Nope. Wait for dual damage. Big Daddy's here. They want to duel ya. See you later. Febby is gone. Okay, Tinker, you almost have your BOTs. You can do it with this wave, QO. Don't worry, I'm online now, guys. It's just it's just been such a hard game for him. And you can understand the frustration, I'm sure. Um, but uh, he still doesn't have it up to this way. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> well uh, IGB are going to be able to take the Tier 1 tower. Sakata now has Blink, Armlet, and is almost halfway to the Shadow Blade. Meanwhile, in July... Getting ready to doom DJ. <laughs> this is this is this is really painful. This hurts. I like the LC pick up too because it also gives them two ways to control the faces. Boy, last game it was just a doom. This game, yeah, in July, gonna skirt past the. They're wrapped around upon. They they could be in some trouble. Although that being said, mid lane there was a duel and ended up missing that. Febby goes down, so more dual damage for Sakata and. Now Fnatic need to make their way back home. IGB still in the area in BOTs July. are up, so this could be a good fight for Fnatic. They're really close to their shrine, and they have superior positioning, and they have the Observer Ward and the... Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, they're just playing it safe. I, I think that... Uh, I, so let's take a look at this from Fnatic's point of view. The early game clearly not going the way that they wanted it to. Fnatic now have bots up on Tinker. What's the way that they try and play this out? Like, they're about to have Aegis on IGB. What, what's the, the move now for Fnatic in this one? Firstly, I think they're showing way too much with Febby. Like, look at Febby right now. He sh he's showing in the mid lane. You don't want to be on the map, as Nick says. You need more information so that your course can farm up a lot. Like, they're not scared of getting the Roshek. They don't even have to drop a drop. They didn't have to drop a sentry inside the Roche pit. They, once they know where Nyx is, they know that nothing's really going to happen on the map. So, firstly, I think is remove Nyx from the from the map. Either sit in like sit in neutral if you have to with Iron Talon, or just walk around a Vendetta and scout like normals do. Either or. Uh, so you can actually make IG Vitality. Now that Nyx is off the map, and he's only been off the map for like 20-30% of the time, IG Vitality all back off. So I think that's the first step. Second step, obviously get more farm on Tinker. He was hurt really badly by the Lich in the early game, and needs a lot of time to catch up. Uh, and thirdly, I think they need the initiation on uh, Faith. Right now he's going to get doomed. He's going to get doomed instantly if they see him. Or Earth Spirit in Silence. All of which are disastrous. So he needs to stay out of vision. Unfortunately for him, 
I think Doom's going to be so big and is going to be able to carry around a gem and just make this void's life hell and send him to. Yeah, it's definitely the case. And it's just, you can tell just by virtue of the net worth lead how, how far ahead they are. And it's the type where this might be the lineup that you would want to be further ahead on. So Febby, he's not showing on the map. He does throw out one of those impales. Yeah, that's fine. Throwing impale from Bug is good. It's uh, a little bit easier during nighttime. Well, Ohio, unfortunately, might be the one that gets caught out here. They ping out that he's over in the trees. Fights looking for that opening. They see he's off to the... Well, they thought he was to the left. Ohio was actually right. Oh. And that was so close to finding him. Well, Sakata going to immediately go down to the bottom lane. And he has Shadow Blade, too. Where did he get all this farm? Oh, he has been farming is up. Is he going to kill Febby or is he going to kill Tinker? All right, like Carapace came out, should still be a kill. Don't think it's going to be dual, but he does manage to find it there. And now he also went for the 30 damage talent uh, and also decided to go 7th strength instead of the 20 experience game on the Legion Commander. He sees strength a lot. Gives you more damage. And... Yeah. Damage so can be the dual. Imagine if that strength actually led him to that dual, then would it be worth it? 20% experience gains, okay. I don't think his 25 is that amazing. If his 25 were a lot better, then I think that... The 40 dual damage bonus is not reliable. Super late game. Like, crazy things start happening at 25. And the press, the attack is okay, but there's not that, that many, like, stuns and silences. From the right? So. Yeah. I, I, I would prefer to set the strength this game. 20% is also not... Not it. So with, like, 30% or, like, no. That's another story. Definitely. In the meantime, it's going to be a Shadow Blade in from Sakata, and Kuo looks to be going down here. They have been able to find another duel, and this one is also the win. So you just got that talent a little bit before. So Kuo dead yet again on this Tinker, and Sakata looking to try and steal the stack that was made while the rest of IGV are pushing high ground and dealing a lot of damage to this Tier 3 tower. Nobody from the rest of Fnatic is here, and they don't have TPs on several of these heroes. Hello? Uh, the, the 24 Anyone seconds home? on Nyx Assassin. Nobody is here. Faceless Void doesn't have a TP either. Oh, wait, no, that's because he's here. Never mind. Excuse me. Doom is going to be brought down, but I don't know if it's still enough. Press the attack comes out as well. Chain Frost starting to bounce. They're forced back and away. Paparazzi takes down Ajit. Sakata takes down DJ. IGV stomping on the throat of Fnatic. More and more I look at it, the more and more I think like Lich is kind of insane. Like he almost Kuo got first blood on the Lich, and look how poor he is. He had yeah. like 60 minute BOTs and still doesn't have his blink dagger. If you can impact a core this much that relies on this much farm, and you're a support and first pick beyond that. Yeah, and first pick, I mean you can't really counter it. Well, yeah. The Oracle, I, I don't really think it's a thing, but it was something to consider purging up the boss. But I, he did help in July, also survive that. He was at like 40% health, I would say. Maybe without boss, I would be at like 30%, 25% maybe. So, it is something to consider. So, Tinker finally has his Blink Dagger, but bottom side, there's no build. Oh no. And in July, he's moving in again. They also have the more point here. Kiwa wisely going to back out. I mean, the other thing that's... Uh oh, Ohio. It's no, gone. Ohio. Oh, no, they doomed him up. They got the kill. He's instantly gone. And now they need to run away because the rest of them are here. That's a two-man stun. And normally that would mean something. But I don't think it means anything in this game. IGV are far too strong. And... Oh, they actually are going to find the Tinker. He ended up trying to cancel his TP because he saw the rest of them show up. Paparazzi gets a double kill. IGV just continue this dominance over Fnatic. Oh, yeah. Shrines are rope. <laughs> okay, Paparazzi. <laughs> Paparazzi just slaying it. Oh, and Sakata, he's over here ready to blink in on top of anybody who shows their face. DJ might get dueled under the Ancient and lose. I think this game's important for draft reasons. I think uh, if you're up against a team that picks Doom a lot, AA goes up a lot in priority. And alter alternatively, if you're up against a team that picks Doom a lot, you can do 
he was kind of had a free game. Yeah, Oracle Terraplay is not a great lane, but he shouldn't have had it as easy of a time as he did. Well, the position one did just get dropped down by Vitality, so it was a pretty big win there, and that is going to mean that Ohio Shadowblade is done. And this was the item that he had in the last game that made all the difference in the world, started to open up more avenues for attack, and they still have a Tinker, albeit a poor one, can spam out March with the best of them. But Doom. <laughs> That's true, but Doom. Uh, and not only that, he was going to have a Shiva's in decent time, which will allow him to find that Tinker. So, Ohio? Do they walk into a sentry ward? The this is the same that. trap they sprung in the Empire, IG. Exact same spot. With exact same place. It's pretty nifty. Oh, God. No, don't no, QO. <laughs> Say it ain't so. Uh, two person stun, but Chain Frost will finish it. Well, the trap worked again. It's a good place. That's yeah. a hard place to avoid. And it's a, a very unusual place to scan. Normally you're scared of going up there, but they can't always be there, right? Yeah. <laughs> but for ITV, they would actually just be there for a minute. So, <laughs> yeah, they can always be there. I mean, I think that right now, Fnatic are making the best plays that they can with the exception of that blink up. Um, uh, you know, you, you got the Ohio cutting creep waves. He's going for Aghanim Scepter. They know they need to fight around that Chronosphere, but it might be too much of a lead now. 17,000 net worth, right around 15,000 experience as well. I didn't actually realize how much Scorched Earth healed. It's 55 regen over 16 seconds. So, 80, 80 heal. So IA Ice Blast kind of does that much damage. Well, I guess only half. Kind of doing like an extra 400... 500 damage because he can't reach enough during that. And not on, not even including his natural regen. Right now he has 12 natural regen. Okay, everyone's just dying. <laughs> They're all falling apart. It's so hard to take this fight now. And Ohio is here. There is going to be a Chrono Spirit, but no Tinker for 26 seconds. And they only catch the Earth Spirit in July, having jumped forward. And Earth Spirit is going to die, but so too will most likely Ohio and the rest of Fnatic. Buildings crumbling like their hopes of. Doom has 132 regen with plenty of attack. Scorch Earth, that's crazy. It's yeah. so much easier. Now Paparazzi, just the attack speed. It's unparalleled. And well, Tinker is here, but ah, this is a scary one. It was a good blink away. QO still smoked up, and well, he's going to spam out the missiles and march and everything else. I don't know, Ben. I feel like it's, it's pretty close for Fnatic here. Knocking. They don't want to give up though. They need. They need this win. Yeah. To reiterate, they are currently two and eleven, and the next to last place is three and eleven. And for tomorrow's schedule, Infin Infamous and Fnatic both have one game ahead of them. Fnatic play EG, and Infamous play IG Vitality. Both tough matchups ahead, and judging by the current standing of the group, they're hard pressed to find two wins let alone one win in that situation. So this win could force a tiebreaker out from and I think I think Fnatic knows that. I'm sure they do. And likewise IGV looking to close out the day. If they do, then there's a chance that they can make it into the upper bracket as well. They get a little bit of help from some other people around the ring. And well it looks like again they found Ajit, this Terrorblade in trouble and false promise. It's going to be enough regen, though. He's still in a lot of trouble. Dogfights jumps in. They get the duel as well onto that Terrorblade. He is dead. So, too, is the Oracle. In July is very slow, but determined in his chase of Febby. Despite Carapace, GG, well played, ends up getting called. IG Vitality end the day by taking down Fnatic and keeping their hopes alive of an up bracket. This Lich Doom. <laughs> what an opener. What an opener. How? Why would I say that? Dude, that wasn't actually countered by the AA. But that, that one, I would say, was a pretty big draft win for them. The first phase banning the AA was a stroke of genius by Vitality. Yeah, and, well, we'll see if they can do it again tomorrow. Mott's more action to come, I'm sure, as well. I believe that we have a panel to finish everything off. Lyrical and Merlini, your two casters for this one. We're going to send it over to them. Have a great one every day, and we'll see you tomorrow for the final day of groups here at TI7.